can't say they were the same. Um, these are the definitions, these are the responses by all. They got it. And uh, then Dr. Sargan closed the door and the way
specific radio ligands um, bind to beta 2 containing nicotinic receptors. And um, as we see uh, in the placebo treated group, if you look at the, the poor smoking um, individuals, we see high levels of 2FA binding, which suggests that um, you have nicotinic receptors that are present in the human brain that are binding to our radio ligands. And after the individual that that 2FA uh, radio ligand is displaced. However, in individuals that are given the low dose of ramping, this is the dose that um, individuals are started with, the 0.5 milligram dose. Um, if those individuals are given ramping early in the morning, uh, you can see significant reductions um, of uh, the 2FA radio ligands that are not further displaced by cigarette smoking. This would suggest that um, Brianoxin itself is actually saturating all of the beta 2 containing nicotinic receptors in the brain, and this is an effect at the low dose of brianoxin. Interestingly, this low dose of brianoxin that's given did not renew a reduction of any psychological withdrawal measure that we assess. However, the only thing that was able to reduce the withdrawal effect was cigarette smoking. It may suggest that outside of beta 2 containing receptors or beta 2, that there may be alternative mechanisms that are modulating relapse to smoking and a reduction of withdrawal. We know uh, clearly that the human brain is very similar to the rodent brain, and then similar mechanisms modulate reinforcement, and then beta 2 receptors are present in similar regions in the rodent brain as observed in the human brain. And then similar reward pathways exist. Interestingly, uh, through the analog, it's been shown that alternative circuitry are involved in other aspects of um, reinforcement and withdrawal. In particular, recent evidence has suggested that the hemangioma intracellular nucleus axis uh, is critically involved in the regulation of reinforcement and withdrawal. And then nicotinic receptors, particularly in these regions, could be important regulators of um, with reinforcement and withdrawal. We know that withdrawal is a very important part of the addiction cycle, and in the clinic, we can measure withdrawal symptoms through a number of different measures, from anger to anxiety, to coughing, to more physical methods, methods of actual um, tremors in the human. We mimic those effects in the animal by uh, giving uh, amounts, chronic exposure to, to nicotine, for example, at a dose that would give equivalent blood concentrations of nicotine as found in a heavy smoker. And we can do that over a period of two weeks. And animals can either be spontaneous to withdraw from that chronic exposure to nicotine, or selectively um, withdrawal can be precipitated through a nicotinic receptor antagonist, such as methylamine, to precipitate affective measures of withdrawal, psychological components, or somatic measures, which are physical um, measures of withdrawal, such as grooming, scratching, and so forth. It's been shown that in wild type mice, animals that are given chronic exposure to nicotine and um, precipitated with methylamine show an increase in somatic withdrawal behavior. <coughs> However, in a animal model that was developed in our lab, the alpha-2 nicotinic receptor not being found, those somatic withdrawal systems are have been shown to be absent. Interestingly, one of the of, I think that's of the alpha 2 nicotinic receptor subunit is found in the intraconcular nucleus. And nicotinic receptor antagonists, specifically in the IPN, can precipitate somatic withdrawal, suggesting that this nucleus is a critical component of what modulates the somatic physical manifestations of withdrawal. And it suggests that alpha 2 nicotinic receptors in those nucleus may not be the regulator of the withdrawal system. So in our lab, we basically are using molecular and genetic tools, such as an adeno virus vector, to see if we can rescue these absent effects in um, mouse, and also using uh, molecular and genetic tools to ultimately 
of H2C and it's going to be So we can give the shipping that a bolus plus infusion dose to get steady state levels of um, this radio being found to beta 2 C and the center receptor. So you can think of it as basically just even steady state levels. Now, you can give a paramecine that's beta 2 specific partial agonist. Prior to this bolus of infusion, basically we can give it at 9 morning and actually do the imaging at 4 p.m. in the half life of paramecine is 20 hours. The, the paramecine gets into the blood, gets into the brain, and actually um, doesn't allow the uh, radio ligand from binding to a site of interest. So we actually get a significant suppression of how much the radio ligand binds the beta 2 containing radiotonic receptors. And this effect is present um, basically nine, 9 to 10 to 12 hours later. Um, and that we use smoke. So in these individuals that have this displaced radio ligand, it's possible that not all of the radio ligand is displaced. Like one way that we can test that is we can ask smokers to smoke and stay tidy. So they can smoke and smoke and smoke two or three cigarettes, and that would believe, based on previous evidence, to completely saturate the brain with nicotine. And interestingly, what we find in the test studies is that even in the presence of in the presence of a low dose of brannicline, uh, cigarette smoking with the nicotine on board wasn't able to displace the radiation anymore, which would suggest based and it's based on our prediction that the 0.5 dose, the 0.5 milligram dose that's being given to you to try now completely saturate all of the output of the two two and the That's a little relevant in my opinion because uh, the dose of anaclean goes up to all two, two, two milligrams, uh, one milligram in the morning and one milligram in the evening at night, um, which begs the question of why is it we're, we're giving a, such a higher dose we can do more aversive effects when the 0.5 dose actually is completely saturating all of the beta 2 containing nicotinic receptors. And interestingly, um, in the Cochrane report that came out know, in a meta analysis, they showed that the 0.5 dose was not significantly different than the 2 milligram dose in inducing long term cessation. But that the 2 milligram dose actually induced more aversive effects. So it may suggest that it might be um, some. It might be a good idea to start thinking about tapering down the dose, in my opinion. 